Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind, but trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. In the suspect you must intercept is a very cunning enemy spy. This spy is to pick up a suitcase containing a top secret computer disk at this address. You will do the switch with this suitcase. Here's a photo of him. He's short, bearded, and, according to our contact, he's likely to be wearing a red hat and a blue coat. I've never seen a flashing light in a kitchen before, Mr. Brown. Henry, why don't you call the electrician? His rates are too high. Besides, I'll have this done in a flash. A flash is right. <laughs> Electricity is very dangerous, dear. You don't want to start a fire. The situation is under control. Really, dear, we can have an electrician here first thing tomorrow to fix the switch. That'll cost a fortune. No, I'll pick up a new switch at the electrical shop and repair it myself. Here's our man, redhead, blue coat. Looks like he's going in that newspaper shop. As soon as he does, we make our move. The chief wasn't exaggerating when he said he'd have a beard. He must have had a shave just before this photograph was taken. Shh! Here's the drop-off man. Bluebird 1, taking flight. Bluebird 2, in surveillance mood. Hmm. Mission compromise. Two enemy agents. Plan B. Intercept the interceptors. You're here for the switch? No, I'm here for a magazine for Mrs. Bird. Mr. Brown is picking up the switch at the electrical shop. Let me get this straight. Someone called Mr. Brown is doing the switch. The original plan was I would do the switch. Oh, you're the electrician. Mr. Brown says your rates are too high, so the original plan was changed. The rates are already decided. I've been ordered to do the switch. I shouldn't bother. Mr. Brown's going to do the switch himself. No one told me. The original plan has to go forward. The exchange has been made. Bluebird 2, go into operational mode. Roger and out. from a baby. Yeah, on suspect's tail heading east. I'll stay close. <gasps> the 
Bluebird one. We've been duped. He slipped us an empty suitcase. Give me your coordinates. We've got to get the right suitcase. What is this? Where is the disc? Looks like I've been impersonated by a bear. Aunt Lucy at the home for retired bears in Lima, Peru. That must be their foreign contact. And who's this Paddington then? A double agent? If you ask me, number 32 Windsor Gardens is due for a visit. I will get that disc. But Mr. Brown didn't say he'd called the electrician. Well, I ran into the electrician at the newspaper shop, and he said he was coming over to do the switch. Electrician, eh? That can be arranged. They're expecting an electrician. One electrician coming up. It's this one here. Someone else at the door. You're not the electrician who was going to do the switch. The switch? Oh, yes. Uh, the the uh, regular electrician had a sudden illness. Oh, my. Another electrician. He must be feeling better. <laughs> Mr. Brown won't like having to pay for two electricians. Uh, I forgot something. In the truck. There's already an electrician here. At least there was. He went out of the window, Mrs. Bird. I'm home. And I've got the new switch. Uh, I must have the wrong house. Oh, Mrs. Bird, I almost forgot. Your magazine. Why, thank you, Paddington. Impossible! I've been duped! Perhaps if I visit the foreign contact in Peru, alias Aunt Lucy? Good work, gentlemen. A job well done. Mission accomplished. So, there were three electricians. The one you saw, the one who jumped out of the window, and there was another one at the newspaper shop who was going to come round. Very peculiar. I didn't even call one. Perhaps you need an electrician after all, Mr. Brown. Here we are at Wimbledon, Mr. Brown, the most famous tennis tournament in the world. And it's our job to report on it for my book, The World and Its Wonders. Do you think we'll get a seat? Everything has been arranged. Ah, here comes Mr. Townsend to show us around. Welcome to Wimbledon, Mr. Gruber. This must be the young friend you were telling me about. I hope you like tennis. Bears like anything new. Wonderful. Who knows? We may find ourselves in need of a ball bear. Follow me. A ball bear? Fancy that. Our first stop is the player's locker room. This is where the players get ready for their matches. Um, um. Tennis is a sport that requires a great oh. deal of mental preparation. That's Todd Davis, the number one player in the world. Oh. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Davis. Um, um. We'd better oh. move on. Those are my rackets. But why do you need so many? Who let you in here anyway? Townsend! My apologies, Todd. It won't happen again. Mr. Brown, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to wait in the hall. Lift right, 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 lift right. Oh, cut! Lift cut! I'm Sergeant Basham, the commander of this troop. Hey, what's happened to your uniform? Mr. Townsend hasn't given me one. He did say you might be in need of a ball bear. A ball bear? 
This is the end of civilization as we know it. We all don't expect any special treatment from me! Of course not, Mr. Basham. Very well. Forward! March! Lifrat! 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 I wonder where Mr. Brown is. I'm sure he's already gone to our seats. The match is about to begin. What a final day here at Wimbledon, and I uh, must say we're very much looking forward to this match. Look, between, the match uh, is about American to begin. Or for Terry, Todd Davis. I and, wonder if uh, we'll see Paddington. Where do I go? You? You get the best spot in the house. Thank you very much, Mr. Basham. The seat's empty. Now, where could he be? Oh! Bjorn Benson, great reputation. What's Paddington and doing in the umpire's seat? Uh, Mr. Basham was right. What a wonderful view. Uh, <clears throat> oh, dear. Is this your seat? I'm afraid that Mr. Basham must have got it wrong. My seat has to be around here somewhere. Ah, oh, that must be it. Oh, how nice. I am feeling a bit thirsty. Look where he's got to now. You don't think he's going to play, do you? Ah, what are you doing? That's my seat, and that's my juice! It is. Oh, I'm sorry. I... here you are. <coughs> I told you, this is your position. Now stay put! Do you see him? I can't believe my eyes. Oh! Well, there's nothing we can do now. We can't stop the game. We'll just have to see what happens. But Mr. Basham told me to stay put. Oh, hello, Mr. Basham. Don't hello me, Bear. Get out there and get that ball. Very polite. about tennis, but it seems to me the players might have an easier time if that net wasn't in the way. Hello! That ball was out by a mile. What's the matter? Have you gone blind? Oh, I see. Too busy chatting with that bear, are we? Good old Paddington. Wow. my Aunt Lucy. You know, you really shouldn't be so rude, because my Aunt Lucy always says, it isn't whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. My Aunt Mary used to say that too. I guess I forgot. I behave very badly. Can you forgive me? Of course. My Aunt Lucy also says, to err is human, to forgive is bear-like. Hold 
fast sworn enemy of mine. I, um, I, uh, whoops. Paddington, what is going on? I've auditioned for the Shakespeare in the Park amateur play, Mrs. Bird. We're doing Romeo and Juliet. I hope my role requires lots of fencing. Well, why don't you play the part of the helpful bear and do some shopping for me instead? Yes? It's Mr. Pig, the play's director. Romeo? Well, that's wonderful. What part have I got? And Deirdre? Juliet? You don't say. Thank you. Juliet! <gasps> Congratulations, Mr. Price. Fancy you playing Romeo. It's my lucky day, especially as Deirdre's playing Juliet. Little old me, Juliet. <gasps> Whoops! Romeo! Oh, Romeo! Would thou be a dear and bring over the mop and pail? <laughs> I must admit, I'm a bit smitten by my Juliet. Coming, Deirdre! <laughs> Romeo and Juliet is the greatest love story of all time. Now we have three weeks before opening night, so let's take out our scripts and get started. Excuse me, Mr. Pick, I haven't been told what part I'll be playing. Yes, uh, Paddington Brown. You'll be playing the friar. Shouldn't be too difficult. There's only three lines. Three lines? But I was hoping I'd be doing some fencing. I've been practising for days. I'm afraid not, but I do need someone to do the sound effects. Follow me. <laughs> Knock the coconuts together for horses' hooves. Rattle the metal sheet for thunder. Blow in this for bird chirps. You mean, you want me to make noises? Like this? <laughs> yes, well, remember, practice does make perfect. Henry. Wake up. There's a terrible storm raging. Oh, that's funny. It was perfectly calm when we went to bed. Hello. Mr. Pick says practice makes perfect. Did my heart love till now? Forswear its sight, for I never saw true beauty till... Uh, till... Uh, I saw you, Deirdre. Uh, actually, I meant Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it. You are Romeo and she is Juliet. Please try to remember that. Now, the dance. <laughs> My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Ow! Ouch! Ow! Ow! I'm sorry, I'm afraid it's a bit difficult with paws. I've made a complete fool of myself in front of Deirdre. Perhaps I'd better drop out of the play before something dangerous happens. I think you're a wonderful actor, Mr. Price. I especially liked it when you stepped on Deirdre's foot. It looks so real. That's the trouble. It was real. Deirdre must think I'm a complete idiot. My niece is in the play's chorus. Uh, I hear Harold's not doing so well. He might be a bit clumsy, but he's so cute when his ears get all red. He really is my Romeo. Oh, thank goodness the play opens tonight. Perhaps we'll get a full night's sleep for a change. <sighs> Deirdre, I want to wish you luck for tonight and apologise for everything. Ouch! Ouch. Oh, oh, oh. Everyone, 
Looks like we've got a full house. Harold, what have you done? Ow. Ow. Now look what I've done. It's no good. When I get near Deirdre, I just go to pieces. I think she feels the same way about you. I heard her tell a lady that... She said that? Really? Her I love now doth grace for grace and love allow. Oh, she knew well. Thy love did read by rote that could not spell. But come, young waverer, come go with me. Adam is very good, but I do wish he'd practice his lines at night and his sound effects during the day. To turn your household's rancor to pure love. <laughs> uh, uh, um. He's forgotten his lines. Somebody do something to cover him. I'll help, Mr. Pick. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Um, I, I am here, Deirdre. I mean, Juliet. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Deirdre. It's just that I'm very fond of you and I'm just out of sorts with nerves. What's this? They like it! I think they're calling for you, Mr. Pick. That wasn't me this time. 